this isn't just about the water. It's about the prostitution of this island and the clients who have bought it. It's about how they bought and sold us like we're cattle at a mart as we swallow what they told us and tore ourselves apart. It's not meant to be divisive. This is not just us and them. Instead, we should unite ourselves again to stand as men, women and children whose time has come to say that the system isn't working, there must be another way. There must be a future where our children won't be forced to leave, to find a better way of life in which they can believe, a future where this island will belong to us once more and not the corporations that have risen to the fore. But for all that we march, we need to keep this in perspective that the privatisation of water is an IMF directive and the IMF themselves, for those who can't yet see, are trying to write the manuscript for modern history. So it's not as simple as just demanding that water charges are abolished because in my understanding it's their objective to demolish the notion of the nation state for all that it once stood was abandoned there behind the gates those days in Bretton Woods when economists assembled in July of 44 as the whole world shook and trembled in the mire of the war they were busy sowing seeds for the future of the planet and the way that we proceeded is exactly how they planned it and for those who don't believe me look up Harry Dexter White and John Maynard Keynes when you get back home tonight because I'm not some conspiracy theorist. Sometimes I wish that was the case, but one thing I really fear is that the problems we all face are so entrenched with what we do and how we live our lives that we no longer have a clue how to just survive if they took away our iPhones, our Facebook and our Twitter, the way they've taken people's homes. And look, I know I'm being bitter, but unless we stand united at the bottom to shout stop, you can be certain now of one thing, that it won't come from the top because the trickle-down economy has been dammed up now for years and the one percent have no intent to pay back the arrears so it's time to leave our differences and learn to come together or the freedoms people fought for will be lost and gone forever because now our ideas of unity and the nature of society abandon the community and push the impropriety in the people who are making calls for all-out revolution without any real ideas of a cognizant solution but in every revolution where the wheels remain the same the bicycle will only travel further down the lane, no matter who pushes the pedals. The nature of the game just becomes the hunt for medals and the quest to lay the blame. So we look to blame society, and we cite a lack of trust. But in the coal light of sobriety, this all comes back to us, because Ireland is the prototype of globalist ambitions. We bought the hype and sold the rights to all our old traditions. And those we didn't sell, we just gave away for free to the cronies and the phonies in this modern dynasty who see success as something measured by the others they put down, just to elevate themselves to the status of the clown. But look, it's easy to just stand here and go on about what's wrong. We've elected politicians just for singing that same song, but without a clear direction, it's just whistling in the wind. So it's time for introspection and time that we begin to decide what way the future is. Well, that choice is ours to make. Do we lie back down and take it or do we stand for what's at stake? And I know that what I do isn't gonna change the world, but if I can make a difference to one person with my words, I would hope that it would be to say that mutual respect should be the very least that we as people can expect. Because since these protests started, I've seen hope grow exponential. With people realising the true nature of their potential, is not the bitch in kitchens wondering what there might have been, if only they'd done this or that or dared to live their dream. But we owe it to each other, to be decent while we can, to be kind to one another and to see that while we stand, we're all in this together, every woman and every man, drawn from all the corners of this rich and fertile land. So I asked the people marching, not to see the guards as others. They're our brothers and our sisters, our fathers and our mothers. And I ask the guardy likewise to see us as the same because to see the bigger picture, we must step outside the frame. And to those who see mass protest as a waste of time at best, it's only because of protest that these charges were addressed. And to those still sat at home, still unsure what they should do, we're trying to shape the future. All we're waiting for is you.